Today I have for you Doogee's newest uh, flagship rugged phone, the S100 Pro. So, going to start with my new disclaimer here. So, obviously I've done a Doogee video for the S98 Pro, which was the thermal imaging phone. I bought that one because that video was popular. Doogee asked if they could send me this phone for review, so much they've done. And with my new policy of I will only accept things that I will find interesting, can use, or can give to friends and family and use. This falls into the can give to friends and family to use, and slightly in the find interesting. So this, as I say, is their new rugged one, and nobody likes unboxing videos, so let's just unbox it. Probably. So it's rugged, so it better not break as soon as I drop it. In your box you get a charger, mine came with the wrong plugs but that's that doesn't really matter. Uh, and you get a screen protector that slightly concerning. I know, well, if this is so rugged, why does it need a screen protector? Why didn't it come from a screen protector the factory? Why didn't it come with the correct glass from the factory? It doesn't need a screen protector. These are questions I have. So Doogee market this as a rugged outdoor camping type phone. That's their target uh, audience is campers, I, I presume, that kind of outdoor type thing. I've found a much, much better use for it. This is possibly the ultimate courier slash delivery person phone. Now, you may have noticed this phone is rather thick. It is very, very chunky. It's also very heavy. But that's because it has got a massive battery in it. Now, should my laptop ever restart in the background there, I was going to bring up its specs, but I guess I'm going to use my phone to bring up the specs of the other phone. So this phone has a 22,000 milliamp hour battery. Uh, for comparison, this is my Google Pixel 7 Pro. What does a Pixel 7 Pro have for a battery? So my phone has a 5000 mAh battery. So this has four times the battery of my phone, and it's also uh, it's maybe three times the thickness of my phone. Hold on, let me see if I can do this without dropping either of them. Does that make sense? It's a, a one, two, yeah, it's an easy three times thicker. Plus, well, mine isn't the case. This hasn't got a case. This is how the phone looks with its rubber edges and again, being rubbed, rubbed, rugged. All the ports are covered up. That's the SIM card and the slot for the memory card. That's got a rubber seal on the inside. When you slide the tray out, it's got a covered USB port at the bottom. Uh, is there a head? No, it's just a USB C port, no headphone port. Uh, volume button side, power button, and fingerprint scanner on the side, and a usable user selectable button. Although it's not got many of the built in things it can actually choose from to do it's in the settings. Where is it? Side, side key function. So it's got a few shortcuts for like screen recorder and the open flashlight. Which brings me to uh, the flashlight. So you may have noticed on the other side it has this giant yellow uh, band here. This isn't just decoration, this is the flashlight. It has a huge flashlight on it and as well as a normal torch for the LED, um, for the camera, for the flash. But oddly enough you can't set this side button to turn on the big torch. When you set the side button, it just turns on the little flash for that one. I would, why not make it? Oh, you can press the button and it opens up the app that lets you turn the camping light on or off. But why not just have the button have the big torch? I mean, if it's supposed to be an outdoor phone, you kind of really want the really bright torch. And it is bright, it is, it is really bright. Have that button, be able to connect to that massive torch for the doing of things. Oh, my laptop has finally decided to join us. 
right, let's do the basic specs while we're doing things here. Uh, so, 6.58 inch display, the cameras are 108 megapixel, a 20 megapixel wide macro, and a 16 megapixel night vision. That's night vision in the infrared sense, not the thermal sense. That makes, you know, black and white night vision. Uh, I don't know if it has infrared illuminators. It doesn't, I haven't actually seen any option. I actually haven't tried it in the dark, dark, you know, in the pitch black. Getting back to what I was saying about this being the ultimate in courier and delivery uh, driver phone. So this has a ginormous battery. And when I got this phone, I gave it to my friend who is a delivery driver for one of the various uh, delivery companies. I won't mention which, but let's let's just say, uh, obviously there's Amazon Flex, there's Every. Uh, if there's any others out there, I don't know them. So he was currently using his own iPhone, which is fairly new. It might be one generation old, and his phone would die within a few hours, and he'd have to carry around a battery pack about the same size as this phone to keep his phone constantly charged. So I gave him this phone to use, and it used, he used about, well no, he used 25% of the battery in his whole day's worth of delivering parcels. Because when you're delivering parcels, basically, the screen's on all the time, the GPS is on all the time, and you're using the camera constantly to take picture evidence that you're delivering the pictures and to scan the barcodes. So that's like the worst torture test you can have for continuous use of a phone. Like, my phone would be dead as well within a few hours worth of use because it's just a constant barrage of using all of the phone systems. Whereas this monster, this will just keep going. This is a whole day's plus worth of scanning parcels, delivering, getting the satellite, the GPS and doing all things and not having to carry about a battery pack because he said, like I say, this is heavy. It weighs at least four times as much as my Pixel 7 Pro. But although it's big and heavy, you're also not carrying about the same size battery pack. You're just carrying the one thing, so it's kind of the same weight as carrying a phone and and a battery pack. So that I would aim I would aim that more in rather than do G's rugged outdoor. Cause I've spoke to a few people about that as well and asked them, would you take a big heavy phone like this away camping? They went, absolutely not, it's far too heavy. They're more likely to take a normal phone and a fold up solar panel or, or, or a roll up one because solar panels are light and obviously you can just put them out in the sunshine and charge your phone during the day, that kind of thing, and not carry about this weighty monster. I can see it being useful if you're going away and you know you're not going to have access to charging and you need a battery that's going to last for a, like two weeks worth of charge. I wish, I wish it had like the newer version of Android where it tells you actually how long the charge has got to go because uh, it just has the battery, where is battery, 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 it just says 73%, it has no time, it doesn't tell you how long it's going to last, it doesn't know how long uh, any of that's going to, like on the Pixel 7 Pro it'll tell me I've got at the moment with my phone charged. I have got until 10.15am tomorrow before it'll run out of usable power. What else can I say about this? Uh, I mean, you could probably use it as a hammer. Uh, it's definitely strong enough for that. It is way strong. And I wouldn't like to take it apart. It's got, well, I don't know if the real screws on the outside. I presume they probably are. Things like the camera, yes, it's 108 megapixels, but as we know nowadays, the pixel count doesn't really go for much. It's more the software behind the camera. I mean, Google's been showing us that now for years, that you can put in a fairly average camera in a phone and then throw Google AI at it and get fantastic pictures every time. But this takes absolutely A-OK -okay pictures. They are absolutely fine. Nothing exciting to write home about, but... It lets you take nice pictures. It's got a few AI kind of modes for 
putting a skin filter on to make you more attractive. It calls it beauty mode. Yeah. But yeah, it, it takes okay pictures. The camera's nice and fast. The phone's really fast because it's got, it's not like it's got 12 gig of RAM or something in it. Uh, it can have up to 20 gig of RAM because it can use 12 gig of its RAM and you can add ROM in from the storage to become, well, I suppose it's VRAM at that point, but it can have 20 gig of RAM and this one comes with 256 gigabytes of internal storage. Me, I'm a person that I don't really store anything on my phone. Like, once it takes a picture, it uploads it to Google Photos and things like that. As for music, Spotify, streaming, I don't store the music on my phone. Don't store anything other than the temporary space for Google Photos till it gets pushed to the cloud and then delete it off my phone and empty the space back up. I don't... I'm not... I, I'm, I'm curious. What do people store on their phones that they run out of space? Other than apps. I mean, even at apps, I don't think I'm using anywhere near the capacity of... Uh, where would that be? Apps. Storage. So I'm using the 50 gig of my 128, and 25 of that is apps. So I still wouldn't be anywhere near filling the space on that thing. Did I mention it was heavy? I think I might have mentioned it was heavy. I seem to have things like power supplies. Everything I've got with the battery is massively heavy. Well, obviously I can't... Well, if anyone's got any suggestions on how to test the capacity of the battery in this phone, if there's anything I can plug in and drain the battery, and well, I suppose I could run it flat and then charge it. Would that show me how... That would let me see how long it takes to charge it. That might work. I might do that in a later video. Because, well, I'm going to give this back to my friend to continue uh, doing deliveries on, because I want to see how rugged it actually stands up to. Obviously, it's, like I say, it's not rugged, it's waterproof. It's shockproof. Waterproof, dustproof, IP, IP69? Is that, is that even a thing? I've just I've made something up. It's IP something or it's waterproof and shockproof and damp proof, I suppose. Does it have a... See, it says it's got Corning Gorilla Glass, but they also give you a protector in there as well, which means you probably shouldn't need it. So I shall follow up with a part two of this video once it's had a bit more... Uh, field use at being a courier delivery phone and seeing if it's actually is the best courier delivery phone you can get for under £500 because maybe you don't want to take your brand new iPhone 17X Ultra Max Pro which probably cost you about at this time three grand. take that out doing your deliveries you maybe just want to get a slightly cheaper more rugged, rugged phone to do that kind of thing and this is Definitely that. It's that's really nice rubber. That's a nice soft action. Yeah. Assuming you don't drop it straight on its face. Again, again, what is it with phone manufacturers doing that? Why? Why is the glass so close to the front? Just, just make the rubber bumpers come up a bit. Same as that with this one. Well, to be fair, the Spigen case on this phone does actually bring the edges up. So when you sit it on its face, it's not sitting on its face. It's sitting on the case. But uh, that wouldn't be the case, that would be straight on the front of his thing. Anyway, I digress. Any comments, questions, suggestions, anything like that, please leave them down below. I'll try my best to answer them. And as always, thanks for watching.